going on guys? So I got a crash here. It's a three-year-old Belgian Malinois. It's uh, not my dog. He was trained up by someone else to classically for IGP. And so his owner asked me if I could finish his training off. Um, he was trained up to IGP-2 supposedly, but he's been kind of at rest for the last uh, year um, while his owner had him. He hasn't done anything. So I'm going to try and get him a BH trial or get a BH done on him in September and uh, we'll see if we can get an IGP-1 a little later on this next year or this year. So um, he is still a little rusty when I first brought him out. Um, uh, he, he just kind of reverted back to whatever his old programming was, which since I'm pretty new to handling, I uh, don't train an IGP, so I haven't really been around any real good IGP trainers or, or helpers or anything like that. So, but I did try and train my other Malinois in the IGP style for his, uh, uh, for his, for his obedience and everything. So as you see, he's already looking up at me. He's, uh, he's so fucking programmed that when I take him out to go potty, he just kind of, he doesn't go around. I'll have all four of the other dogs out and, uh, he just follows me around pretty much, um, basically in the heel since he knows the tugs out. He's pretty much comes out of the box just like this. He, he works. Um, he comes in hot and heavy. I've taken bites from him and he is, has a strong mouth. He's a bit of a dick and, a, uh, when he comes off uh, his old training, I think there was a little, um, there was some conflict going on with his out, but it's IGP too, so they don't really care. From my understanding, they don't really care if they have a fast out like in French ring, so they can do whatever they want and they can be dicks like that. They work him a little more in aggression from my understanding. And so I was having issues with him. I have no problems with this guy having drive. He loves to work. He wants to work, his favorite thing. So I have no issues with drive. And so I think um, from what my coach has really been hammering down on me is that all this drive building, if you see drive building going on and you have a, you have a good dog, you know, if you can't control it, you, 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 need to, you need to ask yourself, can I control that much drive? How experienced of a handler you are, how experienced, how good you are at training the dog and how good you are at hitting the points of when you need to reel it, the, the drive in, when you need to let it go. So uh, personally for me, I don't need a real super heavy, hard dog. I need him to be uh, cognizant when I speak softly to him. So we've been working on that and trying to, um, I've got a couple scabbies from my hand from playing with him. He uh, being a little bit of a dick. So I am really trying to like just slow things down for the guy. Uh, I don't really try, He'll, you'll see, you might see him go get into aggression when we're playing and you'll hear it in his, in his growls and his voice. Um, and I'm trying to really stay away from that. But um, I talked about what does the training session look like, so I'm making this video, and you guys can watch what I what I do with Crash today. Um, I haven't brought him out at all today. He's been just resting. It's pretty hot here in Kansas right now. It's about 100 degrees. Or, it's not that bad. It's like 90, but fuck, the humidity's bad. So um, I kind of wait till the afternoon till the shade comes over the training field here and but i keep him outside to stay conditioned um that's a that's my philosophy on if you have a sport dog versus a house pet is that if it's a house pet and you guys don't do any serious sport work with the dog then it does you bring it inside but if uh i believe if you want to get the best conditioning out of your dog for doing sport work or if you have a really active lifestyle the best thing to do is keep the dog outside as much as possible obviously provide water and shade and everything for the dog, but having the dog out in the elements is is the best conditioning. Um, it's coming from someone who has worked out in the elements for his entire life, so, and for fun and for and for work. So uh, that's my two cents on that, and hope you guys enjoy. Yes. Ow. Boy, oh boy. Oh yeah, bud. Lots. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. 
Yeah, bud. <coughs> Flux. Out. Boy, and a boy crash. Lots. Oh, out. Good boy. Bad boy. I tripped you up, bud. Oh boy, I had to get a sip of my beer there, get myself a cigarette. So you kind of kind of see what, what I was doing. What my at least my theory with training him right now is that he's you can see I I don't really when I out him on the tug it's I I kind of get him in a position where he's not gonna I have more authority. Um, and I don't mean like that over over him and holding on to the no. Here. Lots. I'm gonna leave that in. <laughs> uh, so it didn't get me bad. He gave me more of a. Uh, yeah, he wasn't happy with me. That's a, that's him and I are really new together. Um, I've only been working with him for. Uh, let's see here. Two weeks now. So he hasn't, he doesn't know me. He barely knows me. He's been hanging out at camp, um, at the, at the facility that I'm at right now. And, and he doesn't know me, but that is, uh, that's part of it. You know, like, like I was saying, you know, this, there's, he's got a little bit of an aggression side to him and I'm trying to calm him down. Um, he right there thought my correction was unfair to him. And you know, it, it, 
it possibly was he was creeping up he was coming back here um he was you know it might have been a little hard he might have got he got it he went down with the way i'm looking back at with the, what happened there is that when i gave him his first correction and he already knew and i said no he knew he had already associated when i gave him the second one he took he took it in stride but he came back and when the third one came when he was lagging back he felt that was unfair to him so but you see i don't he wasn't unfair to me either you know and so he didn't grab me and shake me and 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 do anything like that um i did catch him but this dog has left bigger bruises on me in a bite suit in a training bite suit than than this right here so and you can see he's not well i didn't i didn't beat him i didn't we talked very calmly about that that's it's that's what i'm talking about the communication without uh without being able to use your words we we talked very calmly and uh i know a lot of people who if that happened to them that dog be hung up off his legs and fucking swung about you don't do that and that's coming from the handler who would who would pick the dog up like that and swing him about uh, I didn't do that because not because I'm recording and I'm gonna post this online um, I think it's one or two things you know it's like it, it you have to really assess the situation and the dog that's in front of you and what's happening are you being unfair or is the dog being unfair to you so um, there's there's a fine line when you're working with these high energy dogs like this. And I don't need to break the fucking dog just because he bit me. Cause now I'm learn I'm I would be losing an entire fucking opportunity. No, his punishment is he needs to go back, which is what I asked him to do and to do be in his down stay. We have, that's what we're training right now. We're, we're training his down stay and his calm. So I, you guys will see my other Malinois come out here in a little bit. Uh, I'll post it either in this video or um, I'll probably bring him out with him out too. We usually train together. So, um, but uh, I'd be lying to say that, that I'm not a little shook by the whole situation. Cause I don't, like I said, I don't know this dog very well. Um, I've been told he's very handler oriented and he's good with everyone, but no one really knows what his history is. And, and, but I have an inkling Due to, his, due, to, due to the conflict that is associated with his outing, that there's there was a, there was a heavier hand involved in his in his upbringing and his training. So probably go get a beer, calm down a bit. Um, it's kind of funny how that all happens right after I'm talking to you guys about calming him down and everything. You know, you can see where his mind's at. He goes up in there real fucking quick. And it's interesting. So, but that's the, the nature of these breeds sometimes. Um, if you're going to be using, th this is this is what he knows. If I had a dog that's, that was younger, my personal dogs, uh, the puppy that you guys will see, the puppy you see, he's going to be um, mostly reward-based trained. So those are the tools that I'm going to use to communicate with him. Uh, this dog here, and I did a little bit of more heavier handed aversion stuff with my other mouth that I'll bring out here in a second. But uh, this dog, I know for a fact, he's lived a life on a fucking prong collar and he's fucking collar smart about it. The old trainer was fucking dumber than the dog and he's collar smart because as soon as you put the prong collar on, you saw as soon as he had a prong collar on and as soon as that was on no Lock. good oh. so as soon as the prong collar is on he's He's, he's fucking raring to go. He's turned on. That prong collar comes on, and he knows to go to work. You saw him st sitting next to me just in perfect focus heel position, not moving. 
Uh, you see that I also will talk about what I just did there. Um, my thought process on doing there, not going to give him as hard of a correction as I did last time. Uh, he's going to feel some kind of way with it, and apparently it doesn't need to be done. So it, it's not a... I misread the earlier situation, and that's okay. Uh, you're not going to break the dog. Um, but like I was saying, I know for a fact he was trained this way, so this is the tools that he knows how to communicate with. And so that's what my, since I'm not saying this is the way it should be done with this dog, um, so please don't, if you're going to comment about anything like that, I am up, I am up for any suggestions. Um, but this is what I know right now, and I'm playing around with it. I have no, uh, I have no stake in the game. If he gets a BH, I get paid. If he doesn't get a BH, all my work at him, I don't get shit for. He's just an opportunity to work another dog. So we can I'll leave him like that. I don't care if he moves, really. He's going to downstay. You might lose points for restlessness for the downstay and the BH. At this point, I'm not even pushing the situation right now. So uh, I'll go get the other dog. We'll keep him over there, and I'll show you how I work him. Live. Go party. Leave it. So this is my 16 month old Malinois Skookums. Uh, he is a backyard bred Malinois. Something I do not suggest you ever get. Oh boys. And um, pretty nervy. He's been a real great challenge and a really great learning experience for a first dog. And uh, I'll show you what, what we're doing today. I see. Good boy.
pie. Boy. Shay. Couchet. 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 Alright. So that's probably gonna wrap it up. Uh it's pretty hot out here today, so I'm not gonna push them too much. Uh I gotta keep them both in a down stay here for a while. But uh if you guys have any questions, I, I, I'll, uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions about anything I did here, or if you think I did anything wrong, I'm probably sure I did everything wrong, so uh, feel free to tell me. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe.